INC. You can either save it, you, you don't have to use INC as an extension. That makes it clear in my mind that it's a, that it's a, it's a PHP include file. You could actually save it with a PHP extension if you wanted to. But I like the practice of including it. That way I know at a glance what constitutes a complete web page and what constitutes just an include file, which is essentially a section of web page. So what do I do now? All right. What I do now is I'll go in and I will replace that footer in both of those files with a PHP include file. So I'll go in here, open it. What's a PHP include file look like? Well, it's PHP. Always pays if you put this, the instant you put the start PHP tag, put the end or declaration. And that is simply the, the word include and the name of the file. Now in this case, in this case, it's in the same folder as my two HTML files. So I just put in footer.inc. If it was in another folder, I'd have to do something else. And we'll look at that example in, in a few minutes here. So I'll go and copy this code. And put it in the index. Now. This is just like with CSS, right? With CSS, when we put our CSS in a separate file, then that file like, kind of gets brought in to the main HTML file. It's linked to it. We don't have to duplicate the code. With PHP, it's just about the same thing. In other words, the server, the web server, where it sees that include statement, effectively is going to paste that file in there. And whatever is in that file then, if it's PHP or XML, will get processed by the server just as though the code was there already. Now in the case of HTML, the server really doesn't do anything to HTML. The server simply delivers it to the client. But in the case of PHP code, right, there's processing that goes on, if statements, mathematical statements, accessing the database statements, whatever, and will produce then a... Uh, a um, output that will go to the um, go to the client. So now, cosmetically, this won't look any different than we had before, except that is coming from the include file. Actually, it's not. It doesn't look. It looks the exact same as before because I forgot to move the files over yet. Now I'll move the files over. Now it looks the same with the new code. Now again, what does get sent to the client? The exact same thing that was before get sent to the client, right? That, that include file was effectively pasted in there. And since it was just HTML, it just gets sent to the browser. Now, again, what I can do very nicely is if I decide I need to change the footer. I keep moving those over instead of copying them. My mom always wanted to, uh, always want to make sure I was known as Michael and not Mike. So, we'll put in my full name. And save it. I'm going to move it over to the web server. In a way, it's a pain that I have to move it over to the web server, but it's good to sort of remind you that these files have to be in a certain place. Uh, they have to be in whatever your web server's root directory is. And depending on what web server 
software you've installed and, and how it was configured, it could be a, a different place in this. So now we look, and again, with that one change, the change takes place on both the mobile and the desktop version. So, this is why, even if I'm doing a static website, all right, even if I'm just doing a real simple um, brochureware kind of website that just, you know, is informational and doesn't have a lot of really anything really dynamic or, or anything like that, um, I'm going to use PHP instead of a plain old HTML. Why? Just so I can use the, the include, uh, include files. All right. Because if you think about it, if you remember back when you took CISS 2.16, uh, the problem that you ran into was this. When you made your template for how your pages should look, then you started cloning them and changing the content area in each of them. If you got so far in the process and realized, oh shoot, I need another link. If you've already made the template and cloned them, you have to go back to all the pages that you cloned from your template and you have to change the 10 or 15 or however many pages you had. So if you, if, you, if you had all your links down when you built the template, you were in good shape because then you copied it and you just changed that one area. But if there was something that you needed to change in the common code, you'd have to go back and, and do all of them. Now we don't have that problem. It's almost like CSS, right? With CSS, I always tell like the students in the 216 class, you have to sweat the details on the CSS, right? Make sure you got that HTML down. Because that CSS we're going to extract and put in its own file, then if we need to change it, we'll just change that one. Well, we now have that capability with the other portions of the page. All right? The HTML parts. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to have... We think of a common design for a simple page.
contact us. And then we have a couple of other pages thrown in on the desktop one. Will the news on the desktop be the same as the news on the mobile? Not necessarily. Is it possible that it might be have some things in common? Maybe. All right. The example I talked about last time, which apparently is not how ESPN does it, <laughs> but it could be how ESPN does it. We could have on the news page, on the desktop version, we could have 10 top news stories. On the mobile version, we could have three top news stories. Now, the top three news stories are going to be the same on both, all right? But this one's going to have more. Well, that means that we could have a news include file that's smart enough to have an if statement to test to see what the browser is. And depending on whether it's mobile or desktop, show three stories or ten stories. Likewise, contact us. You know, we may have more people to contact on our desktop site, right? Maybe, you, you know, you know, maybe we have the, the, the name or the phone number and the name of every department in our organization on the desktop site. Maybe for um, simplicity on the mobile site, we simply have, like, the, the office phone number for everyone. Well, again, even though they're not identical, they're in common, and we can algorithmically decide which we want to show on which, and we can make it, we can keep them in sync. So, in other words, if the top news story changed, I don't have to change it on both the news story, uh, or both the desktop site and the mobile site. I just change it in the include file. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, there's no website in the world that hard codes news stories. This is all going to be database driven. And that's true, but the same idea applies. All right? Whether I have a hard coded news story here, or whether I have server side code to read a database and pick out some news stories, I can customize that code you know, regard, or depending on whether it's a mobile or a desktop site. So, again, yeah, as, as, as you learn more about database interactivity and that sort of stuff, um, the code in these include files can become more complex than the code I'm going to present you. But the idea is the same, all right? So we're going to use include files in this hypothetical example for two things. One is to ensure consistency across all pages. And that's a good idea even if I didn't have a separate mobile site, right? Even if this was 2005 and I wasn't worried about mobile development, all right? I still would be worried about keeping my main site consistent and having a banner navigation content and footer. So that's a, that's a no-brainer no matter what. This isn't really a mobile issue per se. But it's amplified now that we're talking about mobile because we're talking about new pages that need to stay in sync. Then we may have some cases where it's not going to be identical in the mobile versus desktop, but we can always do some test. For example, the nav section, the nav section of the desktop may have ten links on it. The nav section in the mobile may only have three links on it. All right. Um, the news section might have more stories on the desktop versus the mobile. So there's going to be things that we do to keep all the pages in sync. There's going to, think, going to be things that we do as far as include files to keep the mobile version of the page and the desktop version of the page in sync. All right, so let's go and let's do that. Let's break this down and let's make a simple, um, you know, let's start by making a home page, all right, for, for this guy. So let's start by making a banner include, a um, navigation include, and a, let's do a home include, and let's do a footer include. We already have the footer, which is good. Keep in mind, 
tonight I'm doing is real bare bones. I'm here to illustrate the point of how these include files work and how you'd want to use them. I'm not pretending that I'm making a full-blown completed website here. That is, however, your assignment to make full complete websites. All that means is the things that I'm glossing over, such as I'm not putting any CSS in this, and my sections are very straightforward. That is, there is no images or anything like that. All right. You need to make this look like a completed site. All right. So, what am I going to do here? I'm going to make some include files. Let me make the four. I'll simply copy this one four times. And I'll rename this to header. PHP page then may look like this. go in in the banner, which I called header. Let's rename it to banner. And I could put in there H1 Zellers Inc. Now, <coughs> I'm going to do this just very straightforward, and then we'll, we'll go back and we'll play with it a little bit. So there's the, there's the banner.
Now, we're going to notice something. The redirection is still going to work, but guess what? Two pages are going to look identical. Right, so let's go save all these. Exit there. this up. <coughs> All right. We're on the desktop version. All right. We're on the mobile version. Other than that, the page looks the same, including the fact that I must have forgot to close a link tag somewhere. So let's go and fix that. Probably in my nav section. Forgot to close any of the links. We certainly could apply a different CSS to both of these, right? Just for simplicity, I'll go in and just to show that I'm really getting a different file, so I'll go in and apply a different CSS to both of them. here in the CSS for full and make body background yellow color
hard to tell the mobile that's a light shade of gray. All right, so we know it's two different things, but there's really no different content, right? Now, what could we do? I could put code in my index and mobile that were different, or if I want to ensure consistency, I could put the code in the include file to look a little different for both, all right? So what I'm going to do is this, all right? I'm going to put code in at least in some of the include files. It's going to differentiate between whether it's mobile or not. And depending on whether it's mobile or not, it is going to um, display different content. So let's go to here. I'm going to put a line of PHP in here that says mobile equals false. Is it correct to say mobile equals false here? Yes, because if it was a mobile device, it would have got redirected. So therefore, if it makes it to this point of the PHP script, I'm not on a mobile device. I'm then going to go in to my mobile PHP. I'm going to put a chunk of code right at the beginning, a little bit of PHP, that says, guess what? Mobile equals true. I'm not going to close that in quotes. So now I have a variable called mobile. There can be one of two values, true or false. Depending on whether it is a mobile page or a not mobile page, I can test in any of the include files and display proper content. For example, we mentioned in the navigation section, maybe we have 10 links on the full website, but just three links on the mobile site. So let me go into the nav, include. <coughs> 